This is our last video for our software lesson. In this video, we're going to talk about application software. You might hear application software being called software applications, applications, apps, something along those lines. The application is the reason why you're buying a computer. At least most of us go out to buy a computer because of a specific application or a, a group of applications. For example, we see this with the consoles, the game consoles. We have things called killer apps, things that people go and buy an entire system specifically for. In the case of, for example, your computer, you might have bought your computer for school. More specifically, you might have bought a computer because of the things that you want on your computer that you can use for school. For example, word processing, presentation software, being able to surf the web. These are the reasons that we buy devices because we need to get stuff done. And we can break applications into two big categories. We have business applications and we have personal applications. Business applications is the software that we use in order to be more productive, more effective, more efficient at work. It helps us get our work done. Now keep in mind, as our personal lives and our businesses lives or business lives start to blur, we get some blurring of the lines with some of the software. Most business software is going to come in what we call suites. For example, Microsoft Office Suites, Apple iWork, OpenOffice, and I'm even putting Adobe Suites in here, although it's not typically put in here, but there's a reason for it, and I'll explain a little bit later. Some popular Office Suites. First of all, typical software we find in an Office Suite include things like word processing, spreadsheets, presentation software, database software, and emails. Word processing, you're probably familiar with. You launch a program, you can type in there, it does spell check, you can bold, italicize, play with paragraphs, play with spacings. That's your word processing. Spreadsheet is your calculation software. You can do you know, budgets, you can do tracking expenses, those kind of things. You can calculate hours. That's what a spreadsheet does. You put something in this cell, it adds, multiplies, divides, does some sort of functions and you get an answer. Presentation software, this is your PowerPoint or, or Keynote. It's used to do presentations. Let's say you have to do a presentation for class or work. This is the death by PowerPoint. Then we have database. Database keeps information. You can access it. You can manipulate it, things like that. Email, I think we all know what email is, hopefully. It is where you send email. You send or receive electronic communications. Microsoft Office. These are the specific names for these programs. So for Microsoft Office, word processing is known as Word. For Apple's iWork, it's known as Pages. For OpenOffice, it's called Writer. Some of you might not be familiar with OpenOffice. OpenOffice is a free office suite. And I have a link at the end of this video where you can download a copy. It's completely free, pretty powerful, and you can play with it that way. Apple's iWork is Apple's version of the Office. It's very powerful. It is developed for Mac computers, so you're going to be using them on your, your uh, iMac, on your MacBook Pro, those kind of things. Microsoft Office, you can use that both on your PC, and they also sell Mac versions of this. I will offer this one suggestion, and that is whatever version you're going to pick, whichever suite of software you're going to pick, as well as whatever version of that software, Make sure everyone's on the same page. Weird things happen when, even within Microsoft Office, when you go from one version to another version, weird things happen. Even if you're on a Mac and a PC and you're using Office, again, interesting things can occur. So you want to make sure that you're all set up on the same page, the same uh, type of Office suite, as well as the same version. It keeps bizarre things from happening. The spreadsheet, Microsoft Office calls it Excel, Apple iWork calls it Numbers, OpenOffice calls it Calc. Presentation software, we're very familiar with PowerPoint, Microsoft Office. Apple iWork has Keynote. Keynote is incredibly powerful. I don't use it. Um, it is powerful. It has a lot of features. I don't use it mainly because I'm a PowerPoint person and doing the switch over to Keynote, even though Keynote's a really good program, there's a learning curve there. And usually I just want to get stuff done and not learn how to get it done this way. So Keynote, if you're on a Mac, it's worth checking out. OpenOffice has Impress. Database, Microsoft Office comes with Access. 
Apple does not have a database program, part of their iWorks. If you are going to play with database on a personal computer, I would suggest FileMaker Pro. It's one of the ones I would use or I have used in the past. It's pretty simple to use as far as database programs go. OpenOffice has base. Email, Microsoft Office comes with Outlook. Apple iWork does not have a native email program. However, Macs come with their mail program, which is default for Mac. OpenOffice does not come as of right now with an email program. However, if you need a free, powerful email client, email uh, program, you can check out Mozilla Thunderbird. Mozilla is the same company, same organization that makes Firefox. Thunderbird is pretty powerful. Some geek trivia for you because I know how much you guys love the geek trivia. When PCs came out, when the Apples came out, people were like, Meh, okay, great, whatever. Now, the geeks are buying them because we're geeks and that's what we do. But the average user was like, I don't care. It wasn't until a killer app came out, a spreadsheet program actually, called Lotus123. Lotus123 was the PC's first killer app. This is why people bought the PC. Lotus123, however, was not the very first uh, spreadsheet program. The first spreadsheet program comes from a gentleman named Dan Bricklin, who is considered the father of spreadsheets, and he created a program called VisiCalc. It was Apple II's killer app. That's why people bought the Apple II. You can secure a download of VisiCalc from Dan Bricklin and IBM if you go to that link that I have on the screen. You can check them out and see what the very first spreadsheet program looked like. Other business software that you might run into when I said Adobe. The reason why I put Adobe there is because Adobe is a powerhouse when it comes to media development. You have Photoshop, which deals with images and, and photos. You can do some amazing things with Photoshop. Premiere Pro was a very powerful video editing software program. After Effects is a video graphics and development and design. You can do special effects with Adobe After Effects. And there's a whole bunch of other Adobe products you can check out. If you are on the creative side of business, for example, you're developing web pages or media, you're probably going to be using Adobe. There's other companies out there with other software that you can also play with. Again, you want to make sure your shop is one shop. You don't want to mix and match software in general. In general, Other business software, for example, would be TechSmith Camtasia, which is what I'm using to record and present these presentations. I use Premiere Pro for some other videos where I'm in the studio. You can check that out. Snagit, very powerful screen capturing software. Evernote. Check out Evernote. It's actually one of my five resources at the end of this video. Evernote, very, very, very powerful. It is a remember everything software program. You can keep your contacts, your to-do lists. Very powerful. There's a really good free version. Again, check it out. It's all cloud-based. We'll talk about cloud-based in the next series of videos. Personal software. This is the stuff that you use for personal use. It meets your individual needs. There's a whole bunch of different categories, and depending on who you read, they break the categories into the different groups. Here's a general grouping of categories. We have financial. For example, Quicken, good home budget or program. TurboTax, April 15th, here in the States. You got to do your taxes or you have to submit your taxes by then. TurboTax, very popular tax program. Communications, you have social media, Facebook, Twitter, um, Instagram, uh, Pinterest, so you have a bunch of different social media programs. These are programs, social media communication programs. Instant messaging, Skype, these are all different ways to communicate using software. Education, some good education software out there. For example, Rosetta Stone, if you want to learn another language. Uh, Beacon, this is a classic typing program. Jumpstart, really good software for elementary students. Entertainment, this is why a lot of people buy computers. You're buying them for video games. You're buying them to play World of Warcraft or something else. Uh, media players. So, for example, if you're watching this, you might be watching these videos on a media player. If you're listening to music, you have media players. So, you have your software. You have to install your software, and maybe you want to take the software off your computer. So, we're looking at installation of software, and we're also looking at uninstalling software. But both as far as installing software, whether you're on a PC or a Mac, is fairly straightforward. A lot of them come with wizards. You just click, 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 accept the uh, user policies, and nobody reads the user policies. I think South Park did an episode about user policies in Apple. You, again, fairly simple to follow. 
uninstalling software on a PC, you just don't want to go in and delete something, you want to go through the uninstall process. And you can go through that via the control panel or the software might have an uninstall feature right there where you're clicking the program to launch. When you're dealing with a PC, when you install software, it just doesn't put it in one place. Software gets installed throughout your computer. It has a lot of um, tentacles out there. It's like a tree with a lot of roots. And if you just chop off one, the roots are still there, which can cause problems. So the uninstall process is there to take out all the roots and remove the program altogether. Whether or not it does all the program is it depends on the software. Mac, fairly simple to uninstall software. You just go to the application folder, click at the icon, delete it. That should get rid of it. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. You probably want to look to see if there's an uninstall option. For example, all my Adobe products have uninstall features even on a Mac. I have a link there to an article if you want to know more about how to uninstall software from a Mac. Piracy. Arg. Piracy is illegal. This is where you take software and install it without the proper rights. You might be installing a copy of a copy. You might be bit torrenting these files and in other words, illegally downloading them. It is illegal to do so. Even if you don't care if it's illegal or not, the reason why I would suggest being very careful if not doing it at all is because viruses and malware work in a lot of pirated versions of software. This is going to be full of viruses typically. So let's say you do BitTorrents, you go to Pirate Bay and you start to download a software or you download music or whatever you download. You have to be really careful because that's where a lot of bad stuff hangs out. And so you can really get some nasty viruses on your computer. So in general, piracy illegal, don't do it. Just say no. If you work for a company and they're pirating software, good news for you, you can make some money by being a dirty rat. I'm kidding, kind of kidding, but you can make some money actually by turning them in. You can contact the manufacturer directly. If you, uh, so let's say they're stealing Adobe products or Microsoft products, you can contact Adobe and Microsoft directly and report the stolen software. Or you can go to BSA and I've got the website there as well as a phone number. If you report the software being pirated and then they find out it is pirated, you get a monetary reward for turning them in. Okay. Finally, our three to five links that I highly suggest, and these are some good ones. The first three have to deal with learning about software. So for example, if you really enjoyed the talk about computer programming and you want to learn Java or uh, C++ or whatever, check out these three sites. We have lynda.com. Lynda.com is a membership-driven site. I pay about $25 a month for my membership, and it is well worth it. They have trainings on all sorts of different computer programs. Anybody in the creative world has a subscription to one of these three uh, companies that I'm going to talk about because you're constantly learning new material. So Lynda.com, excellent, excellent company to go through. $25 a month is the minimum membership, and you get access to their entire quite impressive library. The newer company on the block is Treehouse. This is the website. I don't have a membership there, but from everything I've heard and I've seen of Treehouse, I would also have no problems recommending them to anybody out there. Udemy, this one is just popped up on my radar. Udemy is a uh, kind of a community-driven site, it looks like, where different instructors can offer their courses for a different amount of money. So your experience is going to vary, I would imagine, depending on how good the instructor is. So also worth checking out. I have seen some free courses available, so be sure to give them a look. Two other ones, Evernote, I just talked about, definitely worth checking out. They have a free version, very powerful. It, there's a little bit of learning curve. It's not too bad. Again, highly check that out. And Open Office, we talked about Office Suites. If you are a student and you can't afford Microsoft Office or you can't afford the iWorks or you don't have a Mac, check out Open Office. You're not losing features. It's not like you're getting this free version and you're missing stuff. Open Office is incredibly powerful. Again, the one caveat I would offer is make sure that whatever shop you're in or wherever you're at, everybody's using the same software, be sure there. Anyways, that's it from me. Hope you've enjoyed it. This concludes Lesson 3 Software. In Lesson 4, we're going to start taking a look at the interwebs. 
Internet. Yes, the Internet. Until then, thank you for watching. Be sure to subscribe, and we'll see you for our next series of videos. Bye-bye.